we're going to upgrade. So we're going from that to this beast. And this one was an upgrade from even smaller ones. We're giving up speed for power. This means my anchor comes up twice as slow, but it means it comes up without me having to mess with it much. And we're gonna do it in such a way that we can use the old one too with its old bracket. Now, people didn't like this bracket, but it works just fine because it's just bolted to it. And I'm using a coupler that I made up from it. This is the uh, square shaft coupler that came on this, uh, this winch. This winch came out of the oil field. And so I welded an adapter onto it to a, um, a keyed coupler. You're never going to get that perfectly set up, so it had a little wobble to it that bothered people. But it's not a big deal because these bolts take up the strain. The fact that a motor wobbles around doesn't make any difference. But, you know, I'm tired of telling people that it doesn't make any difference. So I invested in this expensive one, which is two sprockets, and a chain couples them together, a double chain this gadget so there won't be any wobble and we happen to have a piece of steel that was used to uh, lift the mast up for this boat and got that stored it down below and thought maybe someday I said yeah this is the day so we're gonna cut it apart and use this because we've got half inch and three-eighths inch steel Now that's a lot of slag on that cut, but that's because I have it set down on 40 amps. If I turn it up to 60, it'd cut a lot cleaner, but I can cut 40 amps off the solar panels, and 60 I gotta kick on a generator. Down here for, ah, smooth it out. And we are using a very old Hypertherm Power Max 1000. And it's got the upgraded gun, which comes on the new ones, which is very nice. Does a lot better job. Consumables last much longer. Yeah, that ain't bad for 40 amps cutting through 3 8 inch steel. It's great. Most motors and pumps use O-ring boss, and that's what this is. It's a one inch O-ring boss. And then that goes to NTP on this side. And then this is a bushing that reduces it from one inch to half inch. And this is a half inch 90 with a NTP swivel fitting on it. And if you have a hydraulic NTP nipple or anything with NTP threads on it that's designed for hydraulics, see that little flange there? You don't need any tape or anything, you just gotta thread that in. How's it coming, Pilgrim? Uh, it's getting close. It's gonna have a little bit more ground. Take a little more off? Off there. All right. Still not used to this welder. It doesn't it doesn't pick up its amperage fast enough. Oh okay. And when you start, so it starts to just burn back shit with the wire. If I turn the speed up, then it digs in too much. If I slow it down too much, it burns into the tip. I think the thing to do is I lean the torch over a lot. I can let that wire burn off kind of stupidly at the beginning. And then I can bring my arc but my my torch back up where it should be. It. Yeah, there. You think uh, it wasn't okay. one of them? Get out there just a little bit apart. You know, we could just we could both take that right old damn thing off and just put it put together it. out here. Yeah. <laughs> Probably be a little bit easier. Hey, no wobble. So if I put the main engine on, it should pick up. Should pick up. Considerable yeah. speed. Well, that ain't too bad, but I, you know, if I want to come up faster, then I have to turn both the motors on. Dragging us to the anchor in the high in a wind. Oh, five for the minute. No. The boat pulled sideways and it pulled off the roller, and before that would bring my anchor to a stop. So this motor, that's not a problem. It just powers right on through it. That's tight as can be. 
the RPM up, I can do that too. Anything? Uh, uh, probably not, not that small. Okay, we're good. Looks like we're a bit of a tourist attraction now. I'm debating doing the painting out here on deck, but I think it's going to be best to take it down to the engine room. I want these back in service, at least one of them, as soon as possible. I don't like not having ability to pull up an anchor. And i got a big blow that arrives here tomorrow. If I put them in the engine room too, I can turn the generator on, heat that room up, cook this paint. That'll help. Okay, pimento cheese measuring containers. I got two part Marilock 2. Same stuff I got all over the deck. It's a water barrier paint. So this is the layer on the boat that stops water from penetrating through to the stuff down below, which is uh, cold galvanizing in our case. And then where you see the whole black, that's coal tar. And that's on top of a couple layers of this. This is good stuff. The only thing it doesn't do well is it doesn't weather well. They didn't, they didn't make it to weather well. It's not a top coat paint. So what I'm probably going to do once I get through welding and burning holes in my deck with welding and all that is I'm probably going to get a top coat, same color, it'll be a nice uh, shiny glossy stuff and it won't chalk up like the paint I have now because you know leave that stuff in the sunlight and you can rub some dust off of it that's chalk and cause just because it's not made for the UV the top coat will be made for UV protection. Alright mixing sticks, I'm going to pull all the loose hairs out of these brushes, I'll tell you what I like the price, but I hate the quality. <laughs> what I like about this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio, so it's really easy to get it right. There's a little bit more. Done a lot of this paint mixing, but never on a boat that's rolling. A little bit more challenging. Alexa, what's the current humidity? Currently, the humidity is 83%. That's good. 85 is what this requires. They don't want it any higher than that. This stuff is really sensitive to moisture. And at this temperature, it'll have, oh, maybe a a little bit of induction time, four or five minutes, no big time. You just let it sit after it's mixed. That's an induction time. What it does, I have no idea, but it's probably doing something with a cross-linking. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And xylene is the thinner and the cleanup for this amber lock. This amber lock. I, I sometimes call that a Marilock. I'm not sure, but they have an Amera something paint too. It's a PPG product. So they're trying to confuse me and they have done a dandy job. Alexa, what's left on the timer? You have three minutes and ten seconds left on your five-minute timer. Well, hurry it up! And the sprockets for the uh, chain coupler, I took all that apart, washed the sprockets in xylene and let them flash off, and then gave them a spray paint of uh, cold galvanizing. I don't want this uh, Amer Amerlock, Amerlock on there because it's too thick a paint. It'll cause problems in there. So. All those parts get greased up really good anyway, so when we put it back together, it'll be in the morning. And I even remember to cover up the ID plates. You know, I've painted over a couple of those in my lifetime and later wish I hadn't. Alexa, off. And we are off. Drip some on yourself right off the bat. That'll make you feel better. Okay, one down. Mixed up way too much paint. I always do that. But there's plenty of places around the boat that need touch-ups. And I've already prepped them. Now if you mix up too much, you also have the option of putting it in the freezer. You can freeze it. It'll stop the induction and uh, it'll be good when you pull it back out. Just, you know, let it warm up before you start using it again. You'll have to. It'll be really thick. But uh, don't do that with your frozen pizzas in the deep freezer. No, you, you don't want to taste that. Done it. Been there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not with the food. <laughs> It tastes vile. So this isn't a paint-free shirt anymore. All right, now putting it on with a brush, two coats is really what's recommended. They'll get another coat later on. 
Uh, if I gave it another coat within three days, I wouldn't have to do anything. Just put it on right over it because it'll still interlock to the paint that's already there. If it's longer than that, then take some scotch brite or a little sandpaper and rough up the surface a bit. And that gives the paint something to grab onto. That'll help out. And uh, it is epoxy, so it's going to dry whether you like it or not. The hotter it is, the faster that happens. So, you know, prep your work and get everything ready to go before you start. And on a hot day, I mean, you'll have an hour on a 70 degree day Fahrenheit you'll have about you know three hours easy so all right we'll finish up up on deck you don't need much prep seriously if you got a metal boat you always got something that can use a little paint and it's not rust it's corrosion <laughs> oh and when you get all dressed up to go to town and then put your hand right where you painted white vinegar takes it off great doesn't smell horrible as long as it's still wet white vinegar all right put this greasy thing back together but we're gonna put a lot more grease on it once it's together and this is a whole lot easier to do on the workbench rather than up there so I'm glad our design allows us to do that there it goes see all this thing does it just gives it a little bit of wobble room so see it still wobbles you just don't see it and I paid a lot of money for that thing I'm using uh, anti C's on everything this is actually what I'm going to use for grease around this coupler too because I don't want it leaking on the deck if it gets hot and this stuff will have a tendency not to do that. You know what? I should have put some between these sprockets. Yeah, let's take it apart and do that again. This chain actually even has a little bit of rust on it already. Let's try doing one end. Get them lined up. Pivot it over. Look down through it. And lift up carefully yeah all right that's the technique there we go we just got to get it through here and rotate it for the square shaft yeah there he goes nice we got this fancy housing to go over it actually fits this hub beautifully and there's an o-ring for it it's going to leave the back side open so we're going to get some water in there so i'm going to put the edges down maybe you drill a hole in it just let it leak out just something to let the water drain out ah forgot to put the o-ring on getting the cover on is proving to be a challenge i had to move the whole coupler back this way to get away from these bolts so that it has the clearance it needs in order to get onto this o-ring wow that's really going to be tight okay yeah, that's, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Maybe we don't need the O-ring. We get to so much of it with the brush, so let's just take the lid off. Yeah, that is gooped. All right, well, there's not going to be any getting this O-ring on there, so got it cleaned up a bit. The cover is over it. We'll see. Uh, we'll just see what it does. Yeah, that's fine. It turns and then it tightens up. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I'm gonna chalk that up to something I really don't care about. If it was doing really high RPM, it'd probably make a difference, but at this speed, nah. So, there you go. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you had a good day in your shop. If you did, send us a picture of what you made, svsecretwhitemail.com. Inspire others, and congratulations, you're not on the couch. <laughs>